Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are looking at high speed storage performance by comparing the flagship AMD and Intel mainstream desktop chipsets with ADATA's latest and greatest XPG SX8200 PCIe Gen 3 x 4 M.2 2280 960 gigabyte solid state drive. Do I have to say that every time? No, you buffoon. The SX8200 is an NVMe SSD packing an insane read and write throughput, 3.2 gigabytes per second when reading and 1.7 gigabytes per second when writing. As a super fast NVMe SSD, it's perfect for comparing the storage performance of AMD's X470 and Intel's Z370 chipsets. Before getting to the results though, let's talk a little bit about this new SSD that ADATA has sent over for us to check out and they have generously sent along the big 960 gigabyte model. Announced just a few months ago now, the SX8200 series packs the latest controller from Silicon Motion, the SM2262 supporting 8 NAND channels, an ARM Cortex R5 quad core, NVMe 3.1, RAID, and more. Connected to the controller are four 64 layer 3D TLC NAND memory chips from Micron, as well as two Nanya DDR3 DRAM chips, which act as a high speed buffer. Unlike most NVMe SSDs, the SX8200 family uses the M.2 2280 form factor and for maximum performance takes advantage of the PCIe 3.0x4 interface. For now, this series offers 240GB, 480GB, and 960GB models, and pricing is extremely competitive. Intel were the first to adopt the Silicon Motion SM2262 controller with their 760p series, and today the one terabyte model can be had for $370 US. HP though has since undercut them with the EX920, which cost just $300 US for the one terabyte model. Unfortunately, ADATA hasn't been able to beat HP as the 960GB SX8200 comes in at $350 US. That said, for those of you interested in the much cheaper 240GB and 256GB models, ADATA is much more competitive here. While their 240GB model is selling for just $90 US, HP are asking $110 US and Intel $115 US. ADATA also offers a premium 5 year warranty and 160 terabytes written for the base model, 320 terabytes written for the 480 gigabyte version, and a massive 640 terabytes written for the 960 gigabyte model that we have on hand for testing. Okay, so now for some information about today's test. For testing on the Z370 platform, I'll be using the ASRock Z370 Type Chi, which features three M.2 slots, and like most Z370 motherboards, they're all connected to the chipset. In total, the Z370 chipset supports a maximum of 30 high-speed input-output pathways, and six of them are dedicated as USB 3.0 ports. That leaves 24 to be divided up for PCIe, SATA, and USB 3.0. In total, a Tai Chi has 34 lanes, which doesn't quite work. What they've done here is share lanes, so if you happen to use all the M.2 slots, then half the SATA ports would be disabled, for example. The three PCIe 3.0x16 slots found on the Z370 Type-C are all connected directly to the CPU and therefore don't share bandwidth with any of the M.2 slots. For the Z370 platform, this isn't a big issue as this chipset connects to the CPU using the third generation direct media interface or DMI 3.0 and this allows for a throughput of 3.93 gigabytes per second. This is quite a bit more than the lower end H310 chipset, for example, which uses the older DMI 2.0 interface and therefore is limited to a bandwidth of just two gigabytes per second. This is often a problem for high speed NVMe SSDs as it can significantly reduce their performance. This is also why it's very important that those who own an NVMe SSD need to be careful about where they stick it, even on the latest and greatest AMD X470 motherboards. This is because the X470 chipset only has a PCIe 2.0 times four link, so it suffers the same bandwidth limitations as that of the H310 chipset. The ASRock X470 Tai Chi used for testing features two M.2 slots. The top slot, which is referred to as M21, is connected directly to the CPU and therefore enjoys a PCIe 3.0 times four link. The second slot, however, which is called M22, is connected to the chipset and therefore is limited to PCIe 2.0 times four bandwidth. In other words, two gigabytes per second. Using a single NVMe SSD like the ADATA SX8200, how much impact does this have on performance? Well, let's go find out, shall we? First up, we have the sequential read and write performance in the AS SSD benchmark. 
This is a challenging benchmark for SSDs as it doesn't use any compressible data for these tests, so it's often considered as a sort of worst case scenario. This means while other benchmarks might show sequential read performance hitting 3 to 3.2 gigabytes per second, here we are limited to 2.7 gigabytes per second, which by all accounts is still blazing fast. Write performance though is where you'd expect it to be given that the SX8200 is rated for 1.7 gigabytes per second. Now we can see here while the Z370 and X470 platforms delivered very similar results when using the PCIe 3.0x4 connection, we see when running the SSD through the chipset on the X470 board that performance is severely limited. The read throughput was reduced by 50% while the write bandwidth was reduced by almost 20%. Here we see that because performance is much slower when making a single 4K file read or write, the limited bandwidth of the X470 chipset configuration isn't that impactful. That said though, we still do see a 13% decrease in write performance. In this test, 64 requests for 4K data are being made simultaneously, though I have to say this is more of a server type workload. General computing usually only makes a few simultaneous requests. Still, this is a better test for maxing out SSD's random 4K read and write performance. Here we see when connected to the X470 chipset, throughput is limited by almost 30% when looking at the write performance. Here's a quick look at the access times. Be aware that lower is better here. The Ryzen platform has an advantage here when connected directly to the CPU, and this has helped it to slightly reduce the read access time. Next up, we have the ISO file test, which is an on-disk copy benchmark. Here, the Ryzen system was a smidgen faster than the Core i7 system when connected to the CPU. However, connecting the SSD to the chipset reduced performance by almost 25%, limiting throughput to just 1.4 gigabytes per second. The program copy test features a large number of small non-compressed files, and as a result, the throughput is significantly reduced. This time, we only see a 10% reduction in throughput for the Ryzen platform and connecting via the chipset, though this is still a decent reduction in throughput. Then we have the game copy test, which features a mixture of small and large compressed and non-compressed files, and this time we see a 13% reduction in throughput for the Ryzen system when connecting via the chipset. That said, it should be noted that even the more optimal CPU connection for the Ryzen platform was still 8% slower than the Intel Z370 system using an 8700K. The Addo Disk benchmark uses compressible data, so we see the sequential read performance peak at around 3 gigabytes per second. Once we hit file sizes of 128 kilobytes, the Ryzen and Core i7 performance is much the same, at least when connecting the SSD directly to the CPU on the Ryzen system. The Ryzen rig was 20% slow in working with files smaller than 128 kilobytes, which is fairly significant. And again, we see that it was much slower once connected via the chipset, especially for the larger file size tests. Finally, this time when measuring write performance, the Z370 platform using the 8700K was faster throughout the Addo Disk benchmark tests. Well, there you have it. Using what is now a fairly typical NVMe SSD, it is possible to reduce read performance by as much as 50% on an AM4 motherboard if you install it in the wrong M.2 slot. Throughout our testing, it seemed like though, for the most part, you will be looking at about a 10 to 20% reduction in throughput. Truth be told though, this kind of reduction in throughput likely won't be noticed for day-to-day -day tasks, including things like gaming, uh, loading games that is. So for the most part, it's not really a serious issue. Still, if you've paid good money for a blazing fast SSD and you want to ensure the absolute fastest read and write performance, you might as well make sure you whack it in the right slot. Making this job a little easier is the fact that the motherboard makers do specify the bandwidth for the M.2 slots. So be sure to consult the manual to make sure you're getting all the GBs you should be. As for Intel users, it's a little more simplified by the fact that the chipset has full bandwidth to the CPU, so the slowdown via the chipset is very minimal. As for ADATA's XPG SX8200, it's a cracking good value NVMe SSD, particularly the 240GB and 480GB models. I suppose the next step now would be to try and get my hands on a second drive for some RAID testing. That would no doubt deliver some interesting results on these platforms. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.